you know, we try to remind people about New Orleans every time we get, get on TV, one way or another. My cell phone's not off. It's just on. <laughs> He's got ten minutes. But you'd better duck before you drown. Never mind what you yeah, do. Yeah, I want to hear some of that Dinah. Bring that up oh, on the monitor. Oh, you do it too. It's the same yeah. all yeah. over time. You'll be where it is. Welcome to Blues To Do TV with Marley Walker. Tonight, we welcome blues author and musician Steve Chesborough. Plus, we bring you the Blues To Do calendar and the CD of the week from Omar Kent Dykes and Jimmy Vaughn on Jimmy Reed Highway on Rough Records. All of this and more on Blues To Do TV, your connection to blues in the Pacific Northwest with the winner of over 20 blues awards and still singing the blues, Marley Walker. It is Friday night, 7 o'clock, live right here on Channel 29 and 77. You know, live television, it's kind of a rare thing, and you never know what's going to happen. Tonight's one of those nights. It actually should be a great show musically. Steve Chesborough is here to play for us. We're also going to talk to him about his book. This is the second edition, and if you ever want to tour the Delta, this is the book to use. So we'll talk to him about it. Uh, also, the Blues to Do calendar, we always start with the program, uh, with, with the calendar. Uh, I'm not 100% tonight, but hang in there with me. I think I'm going to do just fine, thank to, thanks to my talented crew for helping me out. Uh, what do we got? Dinah was was at the Langston Hughes Center, but the lead had a problem, so they're looking for a new lead. So just put the word out there. If you know anybody who can sing Dinah Washington, uh, tell them to head over to the Langston Hughes Center because they're looking for some uh, new folks to put in the lead. So Dinah was was. You got it? Here's a little bit of Dinah Washington. I don't get enough chances to play here on her on Blues To Do TV. I don't care whose it is If it's not hers, it's his That's the way this world goes around You'll know what to do When it's your time But you'd better duck Before you drown Sweet soul it is But you'd better duck Before you drown Beware of the water When you go swimming See what gets a hold on you mm, Nothing like Dinah Washington Just couldn't get enough in there Thank you very much, Steve, for playing some of that And Marjean gathering those great old images Again, Dinah Washington, Dinah Was is the play, a musical at the Langston Hughes Center in Seattle, and their lead just had some illness. I uh, believe she's not going to make it back, so they're looking for a new lead for that. Um, tough one, right in the middle of a great popular run. All right, up next, more plays, more blues, if you will, in a play. Um, it was 
well, it's actually still at the Village Theater in Issaquah, and then it goes to Everett for a run. The Million Dollar Quartet, that's Carl Perkins, Johnny Cash. What's that guy's name? Uh, Elvis Presley, that's right. And uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, all four of them making up the Million Dollar Quartet. Here's some samples, go ahead, Steve. Seen the sunshine since I don't know when I'm stuck in Folsom Prison and time keeps dragging on. But that train keeps rolling on down to San Anton. When I was just a baby, my mama told me, son, always be a good boy, don't ever play with guns. But I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. When I hear that whistle blowing, I hang my head and cry. Ah, oh, it just makes you feel good, don't it? Yes, indeed. Well, sure, we start our live blues to do calendar with dead people, but that's all right. Uh, some greats in the collection of dead people when you're talking about the blues. Um, yeah, that's the best category in my library. Anyway, uh, Roy Rogers, sorry about that. Don't, don't mean to be uh, rude. Roy Rogers coming to town. But first, I want to play a sample of our guest's music tonight because he's got a gig tomorrow night, Saturday, on Vashon Island. That's Steve Chesborough playing great guitar work. You're going to hear some of it later at Cafe Luna, 7.30, Saturday evening. Here's a sample of Steve's music. And do you have this? Or show that. It's beautiful. plays on Vashon Island, 7.30 at Cafe Luna, until about 10 o'clock. Steve Chesborough going to be live on the show shortly. It's Blues to Do TV. I better mention tonight, every month about this time, Lee Oscar and friends gather at the Highway 99 Blues Club over at the Highlander every month about this time. Neil Rush and his band featuring Bruce Robertson on the vocals and Pat Hughes on the Hammond B3, my buddy Pat. Uh, these are monthlies, every fourth Friday, both of those. And at the Rockfish tonight, if you're in Anacortes or going that direction, see Paul Green and the BB All-Stars. They will be performing at the Rockfish Grill in Anacortes. And uh, tomorrow night, more, a couple of tips anyway. Blarney Stone is a new venue for blues in Belltown. Jeff and the Jet City Flyers doing a Halloween party, dressing up. You know, he does the beads anyway. He, he gets a real set going. So it'll be Halloween for uh, Jeff and the Jet City Flyers Saturday night at the Blarney Stone. Dress up if you like. Uh, of course you like. Uh, Crossroads Mall in Bellevue, Little Bill and the Blue Notes, always a great classic. As a matter of fact, he just sent me the second edition of his second book. We'll have to get him back on the show and talk about that. Danny's Pub in Kirkland has Heather Banker and the Nearly Homeless Blues Band. Great music. Also more uh, acoustic blues with uh, Jack Cook in that band. And at Grinders Saturday night, look for the John Stefan Band. Also at the Triple Door, Garfield High School Jazz Band with Houston Person on the saxophone. Again, 7 and 9.30 sets Saturday evening at the Triple Door. Okay, play me some Roy Rogers and the Delta Rhythm Kings. They'll be at the upstage the Saturday night. Of blues there ever was. Mr. Willie Dixon wrote this song. This is called Baby, I'm Built for Comfort. I'm not built for speed. Everyone has to figure that out for themselves, you know, of course. Mr. Auberg, are you ready?
Some folks are built like this, some folks are built like that. Where I've been, baby, don't you call me fat. Because I've been for cock and darling. I've been for speed, but I got everything. Oh, you good girl, me. Roy Rogers, one of the finest slide guitar players in the world. Yeah, I could say that. Not a doubt in my uh, mind. Roy Rogers and the Delta Rhythm Kings at the Upstage tomorrow night in Port Townsend. Wanted to mention Lady A got added to the bill at the Wild Buffalo in Bellingham. Kim Archer Band, Red Hot Blue Sisters, all triple billing it up there at the Wild Buffalo in Bellingham for Saturday night. And also a couple other notes. Oh, look out. We got some Papa Chubby to play. Uh, yes, Thursday, November 1st at Highway 99 Blues Club. Here's a sample. at uh, Highway 99 Blues Club. Another one of those Thursdays they've been packing stuff in there. Smoking Joe Quebec and Benoist King doing two dates upstage in Port Townsend on Thursday, November 1st and Friday the 2nd at Jazz Bones in Tacoma. I think there's an early all-ages set. Really worth it. Really worth it. Out of Texas, Dallas, Texas. These are my guys. I love these guys. Put, it, put together a really soulful sound and it kicks. Uh, what else I got to talk about? Oh, all right, here it is. Smoking Joe Quebec and Benoist King on Blue Street TV. A lot of pretty girls on that roller skate, but my heart's in Texas. Can't stay away too long. Got to get that back. Hey, baby, that's my home. Now when I'm in New York, it's a different groove. People up there always on the move. But my heart's in Texas Can't stay away too long I gotta get that back Hey, baby, that's my home Enough to get a taste. Smoking Joe Quebec and Benoist King, uh, their hearts are in Texas from an older record of theirs, but uh, terrific Texas blues. And as I said, upstage on Thursday, the 1st of November in Port Townsend and Jazz Bones in Tacoma on Friday, November 2nd. A couple other notes I want to mention that uh, next week our guest will be Lady A and her baby blues funk band, a great band. We tried to have them live on the show when we were taping down at the New Orleans. I have to say, it was probably not our shining moment, so we're going to try and do a second round of television with Lady A and her baby blues funk band and do it right with all the lights and everything. So we should have a great time next week. I hope you tune in. Um, Tommy Castro, wrapping up our blues to-do calendar. He's at Jazz Bones on, on the 3rd of November, and there's more after that, I tell you. Stick around. The way you walk, the way you smile, the way you move on and drive me wild. I'm like the way that you keep your cool But you the exception to the rule Some like it hot, some like it cold Some like I'm young and some like I'm old Now I can tell that you ain't no fool But you the exception Oh, 
from the essential Tommy Castro on Blind Pig Records. He put a lot of good releases out on that label. Jazz Bones in Tacoma, Saturday night, November 3rd. Now, there's always more in the Blues to Do calendar, but I can't go over it all here on television. You can check it in the paper for free if you find a free sample in a blues club around town, or I'll mail you one. Just call me, 206-328-0662. I'd be glad to send one in the mail to you. Uh, you can also check it on the web at www.bluestodo.com. Let's see, what else is coming? We got some good, yeah. Charles White band. We got a big benefit for the Red Hot Blues Sisters on Sunday the 4th at Jazz Bones. They're going to Memphis, you know. And more, I got more. Uh, Sonny Landreth is in there. There's some good, tasty November items as well. Really looking forward to our, our guest tonight, uh, an outstanding performer, um, also a tour guide, a writer, um, he's written for Acoustic Guitar, Living Blues, Delta, and Mississippi magazines. He uh, at one point lived in Greensboro, Mississippi, but he's moved to the Northwest, so we're very lucky to have him out here. He's written a book. It's uh, the 2004 edition, the second edition, The Holy Sites of the Delta Blues. So if you ever want to take a tour, this is the kind of book that would be very handy. Nice size, too, uh, for flipping through the various destinations you're at where you want to see some of the precious and holy blue sites. We'll, we'll speak with him more about the book later. We're also going to hear him play shortly. And this great artwork, I want to thank Gila Brum, Brumba. Did I say her name right? Blum, Blum Garden. I'm so sorry, Gila. Gila is a great artist and photographer. She's up in Port Townsend a lot, and she takes pictures, and then she takes them home and paints. And this is one of her shining moments of Steve Chesborough, our guest. So some great work. From Gila, thank you very much. And um, so, with no further ado, I'm going to introduce Steve Chesborough, our guest. Ham Hocks and Gravy is his latest disc. Please give it up for Steve Chesborough, some live blues here on Blues to Do TV. Thank you. 
right, I'm going to do one by the guy who kind of is responsible for what we think of as a blues, blues man. Even that word blues man probably wasn't, wasn't around because they're really, the, uh, an artist who sang the blues was, <laughs> was very different. I'll talk a little more about that in a minute. But now we usually think of it being a man holding a guitar and playing and, and singing. And uh, that whole image of what a, a blues artist is supposed to be starts with a, a street singer from Dallas, Texas named Blind Lemon Jefferson. His actual name, it was Lemon. He was actually blind and he was playing up a storm on the streets of Dallas and someone who heard him wrote a letter to the record company recommending that they come and check this guy out and uh, they did in 1925 and uh, started recording recording him and that started this whole slew of self-accompanying guitar playing male blues singers which the, the blues world had been very different until that point so uh, anyway let me try one by by Blind Lemon Payton. I highly recommend that you check out his original recordings. There, there's a lot of them. <laughs> Say I 
song by Blind Lemon Jefferson from 1926. So, uh, okay, if that is the beginning of male self-accompanying guitar playing blues singers, then what what was there before that? There was blues recording before that. Blues recording starts in 1920. So what were they doing for those first five years? Well, it was women, and these were well-dressed, well-coiffed, well-bejeweled women. Um, not, not like this idea people have of blue singers wearing worn-out clothes and walking down a dusty road with a guitar on their back. These, these ladies were, were styling and doing well and playing on a circuit, um, playing in little theaters, sometimes in tent shows outside of town or in theaters in town at major cities in the in the north as well as small and big towns in the south and uh, there were dozens and dozens of women it's sometimes called the classic blues era that that uh, style of music Bessie Smith is the best known now from that era she was very popular in her time too but she still has a lot of fans now but there were dozens of women singing the blues in those days, and perhaps the greatest of them, not to take anything away from Bessie, who's a great singer, but kind of might have to give the nod to a woman named Ma Rainey, who was a little older than Bessie and didn't actually get to record until after Bessie Smith became popular, but she was an influence on Bessie Smith, too. But Ma Rainey had been a tent show and traveling performer for years before she got her chance to record in the late 20s, um, so I think she was in her 40s by the time she got a chance to record. And uh, she was a Georgia gal, originally named Gertrude Pridget, which is probably a good career move to start calling herself Ma Rainey instead. And uh, anyway, she played with a little orchestra behind her, but I'm going to try doing a, a guitar interpretation of one of her great numbers. Uh, goes something like this. Yeah, you got 
got to fetch it with you when you come. Grandma said, and Grandpa told, she said his jelly roll was both too old. Lord, hear me talking to you. I don't bite my tongue. He wants to be my girl. He got to fetch it with you when you Chesborough live on a Friday night. Thank you, Steve. It was wonderful. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, Dan Marley. What a nice, shiny national you got there. Those oh. do so well on television, <laughs> I must say. Oh, yeah. That's good. Well, now, uh, Steve, are we in the right mics? We're good? Okay, good. Uh, very nice set. Very nice. We're, we're going to get a little more out of you before you're done. And I love the intros. It's, um, it's always get to good to get some history, and it not always is done by a lot of performers. So... Uh, you bring that, don't you? Bring it, don't you? Well, yeah. To me, that's. I'm just trying to bring out this music. I'm not. I'm not trying to express the inner, inner parts of my tortured soul or anything. I, and I don't really like hearing other performers. I don't really care what. That's between you and your psychoanalyst. I mean, I. I, <laughs> I just want to hear the music and to, and hear about the music. That, uh -huh. That's all. Uh -huh. yeah. so. Well, and and you wrote the book. I have to ask you. Um, where did you grow up? I grew up in Rochester, New York. Mm -hmm. And so what inspired you, what piqued your interest about the blues first? I mean, wh who, was there a person in your family, someone that picked up blues records and played them for you lots? Well, yeah, that that's a good question. Because especially when I was living in the South, you know, people would say, well, what's a guy from Rochester, New York doing listening yeah. to blues anyway? Sure. You know, you get that all the time. As if blues is just some obscure folk music that only exists in the back hills of of georgia or something um of course blues has been internationally known for many many years i mean s certainly since they started recording it as i was talking about in the 20s those records were very popular all over and before that the sheet music was popular so people knew about blues and it's been a part of popular music for a long time um so, so like when i was growing up my parents Say the music that they were listening to was stuff actually that, that you played earlier today. Dinah Washington was my dad's favorite singer, so mm -hmm. I grew up hearing her, um, a lot of her. Billie Holiday, um, Louis Armstrong, they had a lot of his records. Um, so when you think about and that was not really obscure. That was like the pop music of the 40s, and that, so that was very bluesy. And then when I was a teenager, the music that was popular there then, again, was very bluesy. Um, the Rolling Stones, Eric Clapton, Cream. Sure. So... You know, blues has has been a part of pop music for a long time. Now, of course, I lashed onto that and dug deeper into it. Like I'd get a Rolling Stones record and and be digging on that, but then I'd look at the liner notes and say and see that the songs were written by people with interesting names like Howlin' Wolf and Muddy Waters, and wanted to learn more about them. And I'd go out and try to find their records and listen to those and say, Ah, so this is this is the real stuff here. And then I. Then I wanted to learn where they got it from, so I've just always tried to dig deeper back into the recesses of American music. Well, and, and you had to be pretty inspired to write the book uh, about the holy sites of the Delta. When was your first trip to the Mississippi Delta from Rochester? Um, it wasn't from Rochester. I was living in Phoenix, Arizona in the 80s. And 90s, I was working as a newspaper reporter there and playing music a little bit on the side, part-time professional musician. But I had a day job then. <laughs> and uh, Funny how those know, go together. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, I, you know, since I was so into blues history, I, of course, knew about Mississippi and the importance in the history of blues, but I always thought that I was way too late. I wish that I could have gone and walked around in the Mississippi Delta in the 20s or even the 40s and figured, you know, I was born way too late. Now it's just going to be like any other part of the United States. There's no point in even traveling down there. So it actually wasn't till the the 1990s um, that I, oh, I saw a movie called Deep Blues by Robert Muggy. 
And that kind of showed, yeah, showed that there were, for one thing, obscure musicians who I had never heard of who were still playing and living there, but also just the land and the buildings and everything. It just looked like someplace I wanted to visit, so I went down to visit for a week and uh, went back to Phoenix and quit my job and <laughs> packed up and moved to Mississippi and stayed there for 10 years. Um, well, it was that quick, huh? You, a, week, uh, a week is all it took? Yeah. Well, I knew that a week wasn't nearly enough to right. learn much down there, um, so... I knew I was going to have to go live there for a while, and I went and I actually enrolled in graduate school at the University of Mississippi in a program called Southern Studies, uh, and all of my studies had to do with early blues. I did my master's degree on a, a 1930s blues man named Bo Carter, and uh, then while I was still a student, I ended up getting this book deal to do this book. It's called Blues Traveling, The Holy Sites of Delta Blues, and uh, I was kind of stunned that nobody had already written such a book. Yeah, because if you go down there and you're interested in blues, which is a, a good reason to go to the Delta, there was no guide. I would have bought it the first day I got there if someone else had written it. I don't know why they had to wait until the mm -hmm. late 1990s and a guy from Rochester, New York, to come and write the guidebook to the blues. It seems like there should have been one already. But anyway, it was a, a great honor and pleasure to work on the book and do it. And a really useful book, I must say. Yeah, everybody seems to think so. It's really become the Bible of of blues traveling. Uh, yeah, it's and it's fun to read. Even if you're not making the trip immediately, it's there's a lot of information there. It's fun to read and plan your trip or just think about it. So. Well, now tell me. I know there's too many stories to go over, but what were some of the? What was a story that stood out for you in gathering the information for the book or in taking some of the travels that you took in writing the book? Too many stories to choose from. <laughs> I don't know. I can't think of one right, offhand right. really that jumps out. That's um, okay. That's okay. But I am going back down there. Actually. Are you? Not, not that I want to discourage anyone from getting the current edition, but there will be a, a third edition coming out. Um, What'd you miss? Probably sometime next year. I'm going to go back down and, and read, cover the whole territory and go over it all again and see if I... I mean, you have to... With any guidebook, things change. Places. You bet. Even in the South where things change a little more slowly, places close, places open, roads change. There's actually a new major highway in the Delta, so some of the directions are going to be different. Yeah, this gives you very specific and clear directions with, to everything, which will save you from what I had to do was get lost all the time. Which uh, is the fun part, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, that is part of the fun. You, of course, have a lot of adventures when you get lost. But, yeah, in the Delta, there's not always someone around, even if you want to ask for for directions you know it's a sparsely populated rural area and often not a lot of signs either and a lot of just two-lane highways through cotton fields it kind of looks the same <laughs> you're not sure if you're on the right road or not so but has things uh, have you uh, do you know about things changing after katrina i mean that's got to have devastated some well, of the areas you've studied the mississippi delta actually is not on the coast that's right. a misconception that a lot of people think when you hear you know you learn when you're in school the delta of a river like the Nile is where it empties out into the sea but in the what's known as the Mississippi Delta is actually way up it's several hundred miles north of the mouth of where the Mississippi empties into the the Gulf of Mexico the delta is in the northwest part of the state of Mississippi and Arkansas it's really technically it's not a delta it's an alluvial plain is the the geologist term for it it's just this flat piece of land where the river has has dumped, has overflown for eons and dumped this rich layer of, of silt there. So yeah, there have been many, many floods in the delta of a different different kind, not caused by hurricanes. So during Katrina, which was down on the coast, of course, um, there were some high winds and rains in the delta, and a lot they felt that a lot of displaced people, of course, came up to the delta s fleeing from the right. Mississippi coast. Right. But um, it didn't really do anything to ruin anything there, no. Okay. I uh, wanted to mention that Steve does have a gig tomorrow night at Vashon Island Luna Cafe Luna, 7.30 p.m. Saturday evening. And you played last night. I uh, didn't mention that, oh. but I mentioned it last week on the TV show, Smoke and Peace. And some people did come who said they had heard it on here. Thank you for mentioning yeah. it. Yeah, Smoke and Peace Barbecue, a great place that has music. And I think a lot of it's blues, not necessarily, but a lot of times they do. It's on every Thursday night. And, mm. yeah, it's a cool place, good food, too. Yeah, they have a... Um, uh, All Saints Day Fest, if on November 1st you're feeling the pain of the 31st party that you went to, the <laughs> Halloween party you went to, the Gumbo Ghouls the twins will be all day at Smoke and Pete, so that's a Gumbo fun little Ghoul. thing to mention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and can I, I have a new book about to come out. Can I yeah. put in a plug for that? Um, a very different thing, but still blues-themed. It's a 
Blues crossword puzzle. Oh, I've always loved that <laughs> idea. Oh yeah, that, long overdue. Long overdue. Yeah. Stuff. Well, there's a there's a publisher in in Georgia that has the series of it's called Hill Street Press is the company, and they have a series of cultural crossroad cultural crosswords. <laughs> Not uh, crossroads, although that might be one of the clues in my <laughs> yeah. book. Um, like they have one on the civil war, civil war themed crosswords and baseball themed and various other ones, but they're coming out with one of blues themed crosswords, and that should be out any day. They, it was supposed to have been out about a month ago, so okay. keep your eyes open for that one. Good. Hey, well, I have to take a peek at that. You know, crosswords are everyday people's kind of activities. Yeah. So yeah, that's a great <laughs> idea. A combination that should have been done a long time ago. So yeah, that's something of mine that should be out soon. And the new edition of Blues Traveling, it might be a, a year or so before that, so because I still have to go there and do the research for that. And um, oh, a new CD I am working on. I've already recorded them in the mixing and stuff. And it, it will have that song that I just did, the Ma Rainey song. And I think oh, that's going to be the name. In fact, that's called Hear Me Talking To You. That song, I believe that's going to be the, the name of the CD, too. All right, three CDs out for Steve Chesborough. Ham, Hawks, and Gravy is the latest. The first one, Outstanding Blues, a great sample of his work on both discs. And uh, we did see that painting I want to mention again, Gila Blumbach? Bloom Garden. Bloom Garden. Huh, I keep messing her name up. Anyway, um, a terrific artist and did one of her favorite pieces on you. Yeah, she lives right here in Seattle, and uh, she has been a student several times at the Poor Towns and Country Blues workshop and which is a great event up there probably a lot of you already know about that if you're into blues i urge you to go you can go like to the workshop and learn to play and jam and everything during the week or you can just go for the festival on the weekend but um Hila went and took a bunch of photos and then uh went home and painted pictures from her own photos and um That's brought good. me that one in a, to the she came to the show last night at smoking feast with a paper bag i th wondered why she was bringing her own lunch to the, the restaurant but <laughs> she pulls out this wonderful little painting out of there and gave it to me and I said oh I want I wanted to see it you didn't have to give it to me and she she's not only a great artist she's a very generous she woman is. too she is. <laughs> well now um you came from Greenwood Mississippi to the northwest tell me about that quickly before we get you to play some more oh yeah I now live in Portland Oregon I've been there a little over two years what brought you uh, out here I moved there because I fell in love with a gal who lives in oh, in Portland I guess that's the honest truth. There's the only man two fell reasons. in love. It's only two reasons anyone moves anywhere. I mean, it's either a job or love, right? So, so Very good. The, the days of jobs are behind me. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the only one reason I would move. <laughs> it's real music for real people, <laughs> truly, with Steve Chesborough here on Blues to Do TV. Would you play some more for us? I would love to. All thank right. you. Excellent. And again, his website, stevechesborough.com, and you can find him at the Vashon Island Cafe Luna tomorrow at 730. Yeah. Oh, bang that national. All right. A little more live music here on Blues to Do TV. Thanks for tuning in. Okay. So we got about time for like two more. Mm -hmm. Guess I got to do them by my man Bo Carter, who I mentioned that I did my master's thesis on. He um, was from a little town called Bolton, Mississippi, and was one of the big stars of the race record market, as it was called, in the 1930s. He actually recorded from 1928 to 41, so he had a very long career compared to a lot of the the blues artists who we listen to now only recorded like maybe two songs or so you know or, or maybe one or two sessions even if they did 10 or 15 songs or something but Bo was successful and got got asked to come back many times um he was from a musical family that also included a few other musicians you might be familiar with Lonnie Chapman his brother was a fiddler in the the Mississippi Sheiks and Bo Carter was part of that group sometimes, too, and managed them. And then Sam Chapman was another brother of theirs. He outlived the rest of them and was still playing into the 70s, so you, you may have heard him somewhere. Uh, they were all part of the fabulous Chapman family, but Bo changed his name to Carter for performing. And uh, like I say, he was one of the big stars. Like, people who go nuts over some of the other blues artists of that era who were very obscure in their own time, they... There's now this miss, this view that, say, Robert Johnson, for example, people now think that he was like the great star of his time or something, where he was actually a very obscure artist in his own time. Um, he keeps getting more famous every 30 years or so. But uh, Bo Carter was a big deal during his own time, so I'm sort of one of my many missions is to restore him to his, his prominent, this level of prominence, <laughs> or at least some semblance of it. So let me try one of his numbers for you. 
cigarette boy the women around this town like to let my cigarette spoil won't you smoke my cigarette baby draw it the whole night long smoke my cigarette baby one by Georgia Tom, uh, who was from Georgia, obviously, although moved to Chicago. Usually you got to move somewhere before they start calling you by your, your place name. So if you live here in Seattle, and you're not going to probably call you Seattle Marley, but if you moved to New York, maybe they would start calling you that. <laughs> but um, Georgia Tom was a piano player and singer and songwriter. He was part of the Holcomb Boys when he moved to to Chicago. Worked with Tampa Red and sometimes Big Bill Brunzi in that group. And uh, then he saw the light and became a composer of religious music only. Um, and he's considered the the father of gospel music, actually. 
Um, and then he went back to the name Thomas Darcy, his full name. And he, he wrote a song, actually, that's still very popular one. It's called uh, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. That, that's one of his gospel compositions. But, um, oh yeah, and this is not the same as the jazz musician named Tommy Darcy. That's a different person. This is Thomas Darcy, also known as Georgia Tom. That is the same person. And uh, so I'm going to do one from before he saw the light, uh, from when he was still doing his his naughty blues numbers and uh, my guitar interpretation again of a piano song. I hope you enjoy this one. Once I had a sweet woman But she turned sour on me I had a good woman but the man wouldn't let her be way of loving but I done lost my stroke I had a new gal I lost her when I got broke now I'm a real kind fella a folks and that ain't so bad but I just ain't got them things I once have had Got my mind all made up And I'm gonna leave this town I'm a going so far till the women can't run me down Chesborough, a great performance here in the studios of Blues to Do TV for our live for a Friday night. Nice shoes, too. Got to say Thank something you. about those shoes. I got shoes. those right here today in Seattle. Shopping in <laughs> Seattle for them shoes. And again, uh, he will play at Vashon Island Cafe Luna Saturday evening at 7.30 in the evening. And uh, you can check his website as we flashed on the screen there. Portland resident right here in our backyard. And we look forward to the third edition of the Holy Sites of the Delta Blues. It's called Blues Traveling www.stevechesborough.com. Did I say that? I bumped it, didn't I? stevechesborough.com. All right. We want to thank Gila for the great artwork, too. We hope to see some more of her artwork come through. One more feature. It's our feature of the week now. We do this every week, a CD of the week. There's so many great new CDs. I said, I got I to gotta be a DJ again. I got to put some of this music on the radio. I mean, on television with pictures, radio with pictures. That's what it is. So um, let's see. I, I got one more gig to mention. I... Our guest next week will be Lady A and the Baby Blues Funk Band. They're going to have some friends down at Highway 99 on Sunday, the 28th. That's the day after tomorrow, isn't it? Uh, it'll be former lead singer of The Temptations and The Spinners, C.G. Cameron, joining them for a night of pure soul. Lady A and the Baby Blues Funk Band and friends again Sunday, the 28th at Highway 99 Blues Club. She's uh, our guest next week, so I want to make sure and mention that if you want to see her live and in person. And let's see, before I get into our CD of the Week... Oh, let's play a track. Yes, it's uh, 
Omar Dyke, Omar Kent Dykes and Jimmy Vaughn on the Jimmy Reed Highway with lots of their friends on the Roof Record label. Little Omar, you might know Omar Kent Dykes from that. Little Omar and the Howlers. Here's a sample of our CD of the week. Baby, what you want me to do? You got me dizzy and now I sing the blues. And I'm Jimmy Reed Highway. That's where I play. But I'm Jimmy Reed Highway. You're always my way. The big boss man is still the man today. My foe learns so much from you. Uh, lightning slim and a lazy Lester, too. Any tailor knew just what to do. Uh, and I'm Jimmy Reed Highway. That's where I play. Oh, that's some great music, and they're having fun. And you know, Jimmy Reed is on karaoke machines, so you know who Jimmy Reed is. You know Big Boss Man and some of those tunes. But it's all about the feel with this guy. And, of course, his wife did a lot of the songwriting. Here's another sample from the Jimmy Reed Highway. It is Omar Kent Dykes from Little Omar and the Howlers and the great Jimmy Vaughn on Roof Records. Here's another sample. Oh, just another snippet anyway. We'll do that every week. Please tune in to Channel 2977 or ScanTV.org and tell your friends about it. That's our best promotion. All right. Our crew tonight included Jeffrey Pullen, Steve Carlson, Marjean, Marilyn Munn, Bruce Howard. Who else is here? Diana. Great job. All right. I think uh, Steve's going to take us out with some more music. Thanks to Jordy, Larry, and Al from Larry and the Lizards for being here in our studio audience. And you can be here, too. Check it out. It is Blues to Do TV every Friday night right here on Scan TV. Thanks for being here, Steve. Write us a letter, call, or email. Blues to Do, P.O. Box 22950, Seattle, Washington, 98122. Phone, 206-328-0662. Send email to calendar at bluestodo.com. Blues to Do Monthly is available by subscription, or you can see some of it at bluestodo.com. Blues to Do TV with Marley Walker can be seen live every Friday at 7 p.m. on channel 2977 in King County. Also Mondays at 3 p.m. and Thursdays at 4 p.m. on channel 76 in Pierce County. And in Woodenville Incarnation on channel 79. And live streaming at scantv.org. Blues to Do TV. Real music for real people. <laughs>